when numbers are quite small, it's quite easy just to do trial and error to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. But when the numbers are larger, then the way we do it is with product of prime factors. Um, now, this could come up on a paper which has previously had product of prime factors, and this is distinct enough maybe to come up in its own right. So just because product of prime factors have already appeared, um, this question has already done that bit for you. So how are we going to do it uh, with these large numbers? And 3,675 and 84 are pretty large numbers. Well, the way we do this is with a Venn diagram. Now, I'm going to use the space down here to do this. And what I'm going to do is, because I find it easier, I'm just going to write it not in index form. And then when I do my Venn diagram, I can just um, cross them out when I've done them. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. OK, so let's construct myself a Venn diagram. OK. Now, I'm not very good at drawing circles, but I'm going to try my best here. I'm going to try and make the circles as big as possible. So we've got um, 3,675. I'm just labelling which circle is which, and this is 84. And to do the Venn diagram, we're just going to go through the numbers and write out which ones overlap and which ones don't. So if I have a look at the 84 first, we've got a 2 there. Well, 2 doesn't go into 3,675. So that 2 is going to be on its own there. And this 2 here is going to be on its own. OK, I think that's it. So the next one, now this 3 appears in both lists. So this 3 goes in the middle. Um, the 5 here only appears in 3,675. And same with this one. And then we've got one 7 that appears in both lists. But we've got another 7 in the 3,675 list. So that's my completed Venn diagram. Now, to answer question A, to find the highest common factor, all you need to do is multiply the overlapping ones together. So the highest common factor is 21. And that's it. There we are. It's that easy. Now, to find the lowest common multiple, which is question B, what you need to do is times all of them together, every single one. Now you might wonder, well, hang on, surely that's just going to give us 3,675 times 84, so why couldn't I just do that? Well, the overlapping ones we're only going to write once. So the 3 and the 7 in the middle, we're only writing them once. So we would, if we did 3,675 times 84, we would be timesing by 3 and then timesing by 7 again. So we've already done the middle bit. So we've already done the 21 in the middle. And I need to do the ones around the side. So we've got 5 times 5 times 7 times 2 times 2. Now on the non calculator paper, it might be a bit more generous with the numbers. This one is probably going to be more on the calculator paper, although there are ways that you can time ways you can do this. For instance, I could pair the fives and the twos up, and that would make 10. 5 and the 2 there would make another 10, so we've got 100. So all we need to do is 21 times 7 and then put two zeros in the end of it. 21 times 7 is 147, so put two zeros at the end of it. If it's on the calculator paper, you just literally could use your calculator to times them out. And so that's one, uh, 14,700. Well, the chances of us finding that with trial and error are close to impossible, so you can see why this method is so good.